coffee feels remarkably apt for talking about noir movies. If only I chain smoked, but I don't. So uh, I want to talk about the first movie in Indicator's uh, Columbia Noir set, uh, which is Escaping the Fog, which is number 300 in the Indicator range. Now, this movie, unbeknownst to me, was directed by Bud Bodica. Uh, I recently, well, a year or so ago, tackled the, the Five Tall Tales box set. And as soon as I saw his name come up on the screen, I kind of perked up. I was really interested on where this one was going to go. It is 63 minutes, so it's a short movie from 1945. It is remarkably simple. You have a wonderful premise to this that I I really enjoyed, uh, which is basically we have Aileen, uh, our main character, she's walking on a foggy bridge. She is stopped by a policeman, they have a conversation. She then sees a taxi pull up and a couple of guys trying to kill this person. And she, as she screams, wakes up in her bed. <sighs> it's only a nightmare. And then all of a sudden, these two guys burst in the door because they hear a woman screaming. She's at a hotel. They want to make sure she's safe. And one of these guys just happens to be the literal man from her dreams. And she kind of has a conversation because she sees this as being really weird. They decide to go uh, into San Francisco for the day. They're having a, a, a wonderful day. And it turns out that our main character Barry is a spy and he's been tasked with a mission that is of utmost importance. Of course, there's bad guys who've been eavesdropping on this conversation and decide to kidnap Barry, get the information, kill him off. And later on in the movie, we get to that scene again and it's played out yet again and it's exactly what it was at the start, but it's all repurposed because we know what it is. This is a clairvoyant noir. <laughs> I love that. Um, I don't think it's been done before. It's incredibly unique. And it's just a fun, pulpy, really well-paced, punchy noir movie. You get these two characters who are having a relationship. There's an instant uh, attraction between the two of them. I love their interplay and their, the, the conversations that they have. Even when he goes to get his mission, he's kind of got one eye on that, one eye on Aileen. Um, they have a little bit of banter in the car that's just fun. The interplay between the actors is terrific. The bad guys. I hated the bad guys, which is always a good sign. Um, and I feared that they could have actually gotten away with this plot. I, I was several times uh, worried by the level of their intelligence and how they were constantly outsmarting the good guys and getting to the uh, information, the MacGuffin, before anyone else could, which was a constant treat in the movie. You know, you, you, you feel there's real weight to it. You feel that they're capable of doing anything and they possibly will. And although that certain things happen by almost contrivance, at no point do you stand back and realise it. You're drawn into the story uh, because of the characters, because of the bad guys, because of the nice direction that it has, because of the dialogue and the screenplay and the way it moves along at a blistering pace. It's only in hindsight do you start to spot some of the plot holes that it has, some of the contrivances, like I said. But that's fine, because during the full movie, I was engaged. I was at the edge of my seat watching these guys do what they were doing, falling in love, having a romance, trying to stop a, a spy plot, trying to stop a, people from treason. I had a bit of weight to it. And it looks gorgeous. I, I particularly liked how they, they masked a lot of the scenes, like particularly the one on the bridge. You don't see much because it's foggy, eh, hence the title, Escaping the Fog. But it's really well done. Just the way they set up some of the scenes is incredibly playful. And it's a movie that knows exactly what it has to do and it delivers on it. Great characters, a really good plot, fantastic direction that keeps this thing flowing really quickly and I just I, I I was so happy with this initial movie Escaping the Fog just sticking on the first one was terrific now I had a look at a couple of the extras on here the, the, the restoration 
is stunning, really stunning. It jumps out to you straight away. Now, there is also the fleet that came to stay from 1945, a Bud Boddicker short, uh, kind of financed by the Navy. And at first, it feels a little bit like a recruiting uh, material or a news feature. But some of the footage that they've got here is simply astounding. And I was truly shocked and awed with quite a lot of uh, what was on show. Uh, really, something I thought was just a throwaway extra turned out to be really uh, wonderful. It is a kind of news piece. It is a kind of recruitment piece. But it is gobsmacking to see the footage that they have here. A really, really good extra on this one. The other thing I, I watched was a You Nasty Spy, which was the Three Stooges short that was on this one, which had a couple of giggles at the start, but just wasn't for me this one, which is strange because the Three Stooges shtick is typical, you kind of know what you're getting, but this one for me, with a little bit of the uh, politics thrown in, just didn't hit the mark for me uh, at all and uh, that was it this is a UK premiere on Blu-ray and man well worth checking out love to know your thoughts on this one let me know in the comment box below and we'll see you next time on Man V Film